the whole thing. All righty, welcome everybody back to another episode of the Ball Knower Podcast Team Preview Series. I'm your host as always, David Miller, joined today by James and Phones, both big Browns fans. That's right, we're finally talking about the Cleveland Browns. We've recorded this twice already. Uh, this is our third time around, but you know what they say, the third time's the charm, so I'm sure it'll be fine. But first and foremost, before we start talking about this football team, is what we'll call them for now, how are you guys feeling today? How are we doing? Uh. <laughs> well okay oh, God. come on james we've done this this is our third time recording this podcast and we still have our timing off completely <laughs> i mean you'd think, you'd think at one point we would have some kind of like <laughs> something to click there right yeah, no it's just it's like you know what just someone's gonna go and i just you know what I, i'm feeling all right i'm feeling all right it's, it's almost good. football it's, season there we go yeah we're getting there we're real close I guess that's a, a good transition to start off here. We can talk about the preseason because the Browns have played exactly one preseason game before we've recorded oh, this. Yeah. And it started off in the most poetic Cleveland Browns way possible with the Sean Watson throwing just, I don't even know what to call it. Shit. It, it was a pass. That's for sure. <laughs> it was a pass. It was. <laughs> it, no one knows. <laughs> we, some may say he, we may never know. <laughs> I don't think we ever will. That pass may never see the light of day again. That was his tribute to Baker. That's all. That, that, was, his <laughs> that was his tribute to every former Browns quarterback ever following suit. He did his best to Sean Kaiser impression right there as well. There you go. Mm -hmm. So just kind of as an overall uh, thoughts on the game, how did you guys feel about it? Like I said, I only got to watch the first half of it, so I didn't get the full experience, unfortunately. We're gonna have a Canadian standoff here. Uh, <laughs> so go ahead, James. <laughs> um, it's like if you threw a campfire in a dumpster and that lit on fire, and you dropped it off inside of a house and that caught on fire. Um, yeah, it was terrible. Uh, it was. I mean, I'm just gonna go based off the first half because after about the first quarter, I turned it off. I mean, we won, but I mean that's okay. Yeah. yeah. I, the last time we won four preseason games we ended up going 0 and 16 on the season so i am putting about this much faith into this season with the preseason going on but it was it wasn't bad there's a lot of good stuff uh, a lot of cool rookies showed out uh mj emerson played well jerome mm -hmm. ford was pretty well of course you know again in the most cleveland browns fashion nick harris our starting center rips up his knee and it's it gets so carved off the field and is out of, is, is out of the you know, it's out of football for this year, so it's just uh it's just great. Love it. Just Zach great. Wilson gets away with a friggin' meniscus tear and we lose our starting center. What is the world? And it sucks too, because we we're all pretty high on Nick Harris. We're all big fans of him. Like I can remember from the last two recordings. Mm -hmm. All praise. And now we're not gonna get to see him play this year. No. It's extremely unfortunate. Now, do we you guys want write history? We can just say that we were like, no, nah, he was he wasn't gonna be anything. Don't worry. No, about he, he it. Sucked. no one knows what happened in those <laughs> right here. No, uh, so do you guys want them to bring back JC Treader now? Or are you guys on that train? Because I've seen a lot of Cleveland Browns fans just kind of defaulting to that now. I, I want to stop suffering. <laughs> That's what I want. Okay, we're talking realistic expectations here. I, 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 stuck. I was saying I was on that train. Um I posted something about that saying like, I, there's no way you can look at any center that's still available and not be like, all right, well, I guess we kind of have to go with JC. Mm -hmm. Like no matter what, what's there, what's left, you got to pay him and figure out whatever we talked about this last time, allegedly. Um, but whatever was there, whatever is he's thinking in his mind, try to convince him otherwise and get him back into the organization. Right. You ever see that meme of the dog sitting at the kitchen table and he goes, it's fine. Everything's fine, and the house around him is on fire. Um, mm -hmm. That that is that is my current expression to the Browns at the moment. If I could if I could relay how my mind thinks about sports at the moment, that is that is the meme. Well, Jamie or phones. Sorry, I want to call, call you phones. I'm going love. by phones because the story is better. Uh, after this recording, I'm going to slip you a phone number in your Twitter DMs, and I think you might need to have that on standby throughout the season <laughs> if you're already at this point after one week of the preseason. Is it your phone number? It is not my phone number. It's a 
It's a lot shorter than is my it phone Roger number. Goodell's phone number. Because if so, <laughs> I would love to have Pim's number. I have a few bones to pick with him. Well, yeah, Roger's doing the right line. thing. <laughs> Roger, Roger, Roger rarely does the right thing. He did. He's doing it for the first time, like out of his what do we want to call it okay. a career? The first time ever he's done the right thing by appealing the suspension. Can I say that I'm in the tinfoil hat camp of this? Like oh my god! I'm buying all into that. He got this arbitrator, whatever. I, I, I didn't go to law school, but he had this external right. person to do these things and be like, oh well. Here's what you did off your past president. He's like, well, no, that's wrong. I have to be the hero now. It is the pass interference all over again. Oh, I'm I wouldn't be shocked. Suspended for longer, but tell me, I tell me, there's not some validity to what I'm saying. No, I, I wouldn't doubt it for a minute. I, I'm, I'm not going to say it's set in stone, but if we found out 30, 40 years down the line that was the case, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy, bat an eye at it. It wouldn't shock me one bit because that's the type of weird, backwards, sick fuck Roger Goodell is that mm -hmm. he wants to play hero in this type of situation. You know, in the words of Dave Portnoy, Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, he is, pretty he's, much. He's, a, he's the most corrupt sports commissioner out there. I mean, it's it's Roger. That's Roger for you. He'll he'll pick and choose the wars he wants to fight, and the, and of course he picks this one against the Cleveland Browns. Well, in all fairness, this is a good one to be fighting. I mean, that's totally valid. <laughs> but it's it's the fact that it's with the Browns. It's it, it, it has nothing to yeah. do with the Deshaun Watson decision. It has everything to do with the fact that it's against the Browns. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I mean the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. And no, I, I was just gonna. It's a, it's a completely valid reason to go after us, but of course it's the Browns. Yeah, I was gonna say the Browns fans like you two that I know are not condoning Watson or defending him. I feel so bad for you guys. Like I really do. You guys are being torn through the ringer and being grouped in with twelve-year-olds that don't understand what consent is and just being subjected to more and more pain and misery that you've already dealt with for years. All because your organization was like, you know what? Let's try to win now by getting the worst human being in football to be our quarterback. <laughs> Big brain. <laughs> Big brain. I, I would rather rewatch. I would. I would honestly rather have to sit down and rewatch Justin Gilbert and Johnny Manziel get drafted again oh than have to deal with this. I mean, I swear to God, I, I would rather have Jimmy Clausen five times over and deal with Mel Kuyper telling me how he's going to leave football I mean, then have to deal with this. Because here's the thing. I like the Browns. I do. I don't know why. It's like a toxic relationship where all my friends are telling me I'm crazy. <sighs> just it's, it's, one, it's that time where it's just like the moment I leave, they just suck me right back in. And, of course, now I'm like, all right, maybe this is uh, – maybe I should go cheer on like – I gotta, you gotta find like that random football team that for no reason you just have to start cheering for, like the Dolphins. Why? I don't know. You tell me. I have no reason to cheer for Miami, but you know what? I maybe, maybe it's time I just move away from the Browns a little bit. That's fair. That's valid. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I promise my laptop is being goofy. This isn't the software goofing up. We're good. We're not about say, to have a Discord. Repeat. I don't want to have. I don't want to have the repeat of the last few times. Where, hey, bud. <laughs> oh, what's going I on? Know. Hey, Those phones. Were... How you doing? Hey, listen. <laughs> we're gonna have to re-record again. Oh, my God. Hey, listen. I'm. I'm just. I feel blessed that you guys were willing to put up with it. Honestly, Three times. yeah, because I mean it is ridiculous. I fully understand that it's been a ridiculous situation with this, but no, I I just have a shitty laptop, and sometimes my mouth gets stuck, and I tried to mute myself to cough, and my mouse slipped over to my camera mm -hmm. and just started clicking for itself. So we're good, we're good. You no, know, no. I always get a kick out of the fact that people always want to bring up Deshaun Watson, but you know, Kareem Hunt is just as a versatile yeah. offensive player as well. Jacob Phillips. Um, Grant Del Pitt both had issues at LSU with sexual assault. Really? Jesus, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't know that yeah, either. And Ogeron cover up. <sighs> that sucks. I liked Grant Del Pitt. I liked that Ogeron. Dude, Dude I, I've been player. I've been praising Grant Del Pitt all off season. I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. I got to do background checks on every single player I like now. This That's is like be the, the next thing. This is like the bad boys of the Detroit Pistons, where it was just like. 
you just didn't want to fuck with them on the court, and you knew off the court they were just some badasses as well. Well, yeah, but and the I difference mean badasses is, in the worst way. Well, they were just kind of dicks. These guys are doing the worst. Menace to society, some would say. Beyond menace to society in some cases, but yeah. Uh, speaking of Kareem Hunt, that's a good transition. How do you guys feel about the whole situation going on with him and requesting a trade? And and like I said, Oh God, not this again. J Go ahead, James. I always lead this off. <laughs> Send him. I mean, I get look, I get that he's a talented running back and he's one of the best running backs in the league when he's healthy. But running backs like are just getting pumped into the league. These athletics running backs are just coming in more and more. We're getting a guy from our backyard in Cincinnati, technically Alabama, but Cincinnati in Jerome Ford, who's now stepped mm -hmm. up in great dude. Jernis Johnson out of nowhere. Demetric Felton might remember how to play football at some point. <laughs> like, I don't know what happened to him last year, but he could remember. Like We are getting these dudes into this system and into so many systems. Look at Miami if we're going to talk about them. There's a surplus of running backs. There is no need to pay a running back like Kareem Hunt. Mm -hmm. I agree completely. I took it right out of my mouth. Honestly, I would trade him because this also leads into the next topic that I know you're going to ask us about, which is wide receiver. I would trade Kareem Hunt in a second-round pick for a wide receiver of some kind, because this is, I mean, it is, I think this, this wide receiver room, if Amari Cooper isn't healthy, is like watching, it's worse than Chicago's. Mm -hmm. Fair. Definitely I mean, it's, fair. It's bad. I saw a tweet today and that, that was the first time I've ever, I have thought about this the whole off season. I was like, if Amari Cooper, I'm going Amari Rogers, Amari Cooper goes down with an injury. That goes down to 32nd wide receiver core. Like, yeah. That's it. It's just very quickly. <laughs> And we saw that in the, the preseason game with Anthony Schwartz and his oh. two drops very early on. His stone hands, you mean? Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about Tim Foyle hat. Part of me really wishes that was just him trying to make Watson look bad. But, <laughs> I mean, we, we know Anthony Schwartz isn't anything special. He's a I burner. Don't, I but... don't think he has any ground to stand on to try to make anyone look bad because he never had hands to begin with. Yeah. He was exactly that, a burner. But yeah. he just he doesn't have any hands. He's fast, but you know who else was fast? John Ross. Yeah. I mean, pretty much. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, there's nothing we can do now. Yeah. I, I'd sign Will Fuller, I guess. I don't know. I was going to say, there's good free agents available, but uh, from reports, apparently you guys need to save up your money if Watson gets that year because Jimmy Garoppolo is coming to town. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I get. Give, give me Jacoby. Give me Jacoby. I don't give a shit. Jacoby's Jimmy Garoppolo, but like $25 million cheaper. Exactly. I agree completely. I think I'll, it would be a horrible mistake to waste money on Jimmy Garoppolo. I'll right take now. the rocket scientist from Tennessee and Josh Dobbs over Jimmy Garoppolo and his. He looks like he should be on like a Just for Men or like a Suave commercial. I don't. He just has that like yeah. Hollywood look to him. Mm -hmm. He's Josh too pretty. Dobbs. Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> I mean, sure. I mean, Man, if Josh Dobbs guy. wants to go model for Suave. I mean, I'm well, that's what I was thinking. I was like, why is he doing all? I mean, hey, they're, they're trying to diversify models. their catalog with models nowadays. I mean, Maybe I, they I'm need sure a Josh, Josh Dobbs, Dobbs out is there. Bald, but I mean, if they want to make like a he's bald very studio, bald. Yeah. He's very bald. You know, I asked one of my bald friends actually to get massively off topic here. I asked one of my bald friends if he uses shampoo, and he's like, "Actually, I use a very special shampoo." I was like, "Wow!" And he like oils his head and everything, and like rubs it on. I'm like, "Oh wow, okay." That was now you know. Well, there you bald go. People they need still to, use shampoo. They're gonna start up a new uh, product that's just for bald men, mm -hmm. and it's. Just going to be Josh Dobbs modeling it. <laughs> it's just going to be Josh Dobbs modeling it. Absolutely. No one else. Just Josh Dobbs. He's exactly. their only model. Just for Dobbs. Yeah. Just for Dobbs. <laughs> just for Dobbs. I love there it. There you go. No, uh, but back to Kareem Hunt, just so we can wrap up with that real quick. I agree completely. I think paying him would be a horrible mistake. Kind of like James said, he's super talented. He's a good running back. Piece of shit off the field, but he's a good running back. And... Whether people want to admit it or not, he's the second running back in Cleveland. I feel like we that should be apparent to everybody. I guess some people that doesn't register with them. And just like James said and Phones agreed with, uh, if you have 
six running backs on the roster, however many there are now, there is no point in paying more than one of them. And it's not that you already paid Nick Chubb, if I'm not mistaken, within the past couple of years. So paying Hunt would be a waste of money. Like, yeah, he's a good offensive weapon. He's good in the pass game. But I liked a lot what I saw to Jerome Ford in that first preseason game. I liked him a lot coming out of college. He can do exactly what Kareem Hunt is doing for you for a hell of a lot cheaper and probably for longer as well. Cause Hunt's already like what 27, 28 and running back years. It's like 94. Like he's pushing it at this point. It, it's hard to match his catching capability. So, yeah. Which is why fair. I'm very high on him in fantasy. Right. There's some free fantasy advice. Kareem Hunt's going to be playing a lot of, a lot of outside receiver. <laughs> outside receiver. I mean, he could stick in the slot too. I don't know. That's rough. I'm not doubting you. I'm just saying if that's the situation we're in in Cleveland, that's rough. I mean, please tell me, is Donovan Peoples-Jones going to have like a Devontae Adams type breakout type (laughs) season? No. Not with Jacoby Brissett throwing him the football. Hey, hey, just for Dobbs is coming in. No, my apologies. Not with Josh Dobbs. The rocket scientist will shock you. Hey, come on. We still have Rosen back there somewhere, right? He he didn't even look that bad either. Did he play? I missed him a little bit. I don't know. I think he had like five. I must have I tuned he, out at that point. I think so. Again, I but I'm just gonna. I didn't hear anything bad. Didn't hear anything good. Fair. Didn't hear anything bad though. So I'm gonna assume he played uh, uh, mid. He was a quarterback out there. That's for sure. Yeah, there there was way. a quarterback present. <laughs> Get confirmed. Yeah. He did play quarterback. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Potentially that game. The big if true. <laughs> Big, if, Big true. if true, and very true. Mm-hmm. Rumors are saying that he was playing quarterback. Uh-huh. And this is huge if true. I get my I get my sources from Ballsack Sports and Leroy the Dog. <laughs> so valid. Uh, Big if true. Very valid. Official stat line of passing: Josh Rosen went six for seven with fifty six yards. That's that's no quarterback one. play. That's seven more passes I've ever thrown in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what. How many yards did you say he had? 56. 56. It's 49 more yards than Watson had. And four mm. more completions. It's 13 yards away from 69. Nice. I know. That's the real takeaway. Really here. That's all that matters. Yeah. That's why we're here, folks. Shout so, out to Chase Winovich. Where's number 69? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chase. That's a great segue. Let's talk about some of the players you guys brought in in free agency with or free agency and through trades. Obviously, Amari Cooper was brought up, but. He's a great receiver. If he stays on the field, I mean, whoever's playing quarterback has a reliable number one to get the ball to. And, you know, that's never a bad thing. Definitely a big upgrade. And getting him for a fifth-round pick, I mean, that's a steal. You had to pay him, but fifth-round pick's a steal for a wide receiver of that caliber. Um, And then, obviously, Chase Winovich you brought in, kind of one of those guys that just does his job. And, again, never hurts to have a guy like that. Uh, Jack Conklin came in, if I'm not mistaken. No, he's been no. on the team. For, he's been on the team forever. He's coming back from injury. Oh, though. that's what it is. That's why I have him written down as an addition. Okay. He I tore his, there. He tore his patellar tendon. Yep. Oh. Yeah. So you're getting him back. And that's I mean, that's a offensive lineman that sometimes plays football. His injury history ever since leaving t- Tennessee has been terrible. Uh, he's mm-hmm. just—I don't think he's played more than like eight or nine games for us in a season, which sucks because he's probably the best run-blocking right tackle mm-hmm. in recent memory. I mean, of course, now there's guys that will beat him for sure, but without question, I think he is a very talented running, talented running back, talented right tackle. If when he, if and when he's on the field, yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah. No opposition here. I feel like a real doofus for questioning whether or not Jack Conklin signed with the Browns this offseason. I knew he was a Cleveland Brown. I just had him written down under additions because he's coming off an injury. Mm, that's okay. No that's okay. I just yeah. called him a running back, so don't feel too bad. There we go. I we're just, we're just I all not here, no, not in my head. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. But yeah. Other well, than that, like outside of draft picks, am I missing anybody? Ah. Uh, I mean, Brissett came in, I guess. Anthony Walker came back in a one year deal. Okay. I think. Yeah, I can't think of anyone else that really made an impact in that game, though. That wasn't a rookie. Fair I enough. don't remember. Again, the first series was so bad, I was just like, I'm just uh, yeah. just turn that one off. It's not fun. I kept, I kept watching it because I wanted to see Watson struggle, and I was really, really hoping Trayvon Walker was just going to get back there and lay one good hit. That's all I was asking for, just one. No, but he, he was... He was doing work on uh, 
who's the left tackle? Wills. Jedrick, Jedrick Wills. He was doing work on Wills early on. He, he to me just seems like a guy that just is never going to live up to his fullest potential. I mean, because in that draft class, I mean, he was in 2019. He was the best right tackle mm-hmm. in that entire draft, and it was like it was him, Becton, Werfs, Thomas, and I want to say someone else was in that mix as well. Uh, Help me out here. Tri- I think Tris- I Tristan Wirfs, Mackay Becton, Andrew Thomas, Jedrick Wills, and there was a fifth lineman. Oh my God, I know exactly what you're talking about too. Uh huh. <sighs> Tristan Wirfs went to Iowa. Jedrick Wills went to Alabama. Mackay Becton went to. Or did Mackay NC State? No. Louisville. No. I think oh. no, Becton's Louisville. Becton is Louisville. Okay. Oh, fuck. We need well, the Jeopardy the music right now. That'd probably do, be more entertaining than talking about the Browns for an hour, just trying to remember where random players went in really the draft would. and what it school really they went would. to. It would be a Jeopardy category. Name that Browns player. Or was it 2020? Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, it was. Okay, what was 2019? Right. Oh, 2019 was Greedies. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Wills had a really good rookie year, and then year two last year oh. didn't look very good. Dunk. I would yeah. I would never have guessed it, but I have the name if you guys want it. Who is Go it? ahead. Austin Jackson. Oh. oh. I don't know if that was him. He went to Miami though, didn't he? Mm-hmm. he Where the hell is Austin Jackson? Isaiah Wilson. Right oh, it was Isaiah Wilson. That's who it is. Yeah, it was it. Isaiah there Wilson. it is. When he was there out, it is. Even, he played yeah. one snap, one series. Yeah, I think. I mean, he wasn't there very long. Tennessee. He got drafted by Tennessee and mm-hmm. then got cut. Late first round and got cut like after year one, right? Yeah, Isaac Rochelle came in. He's like a third string defensive lineman. I know he came in as an addition. Okay. Oh, yeah. You're making me dig. You're making me dig through this. No, I mean, we can move on. Uh, You don't have to name every single free agent you brought in. I was just seeing if I was missing any major ones. No. I just keep cutting you off. But um, that's it. Okay. Quick uh, um, Browns news that just came through. Uh, an MRI has confirmed that Browns center Dawson Deaton has suffered a torn ACL and will miss the season. So that Jesus. is our backup center now out. Yeah, so what's that leave? Oh, God. I don't even know. I honest to God don't How know. How do you say that man's center. name? Hjalte Froholt? What? I, I think it's Hjalte Froholt. Why can't I just have nice Ethan things in this Pochich world? All I want is a Rock oh, Hoffman. Oh yeah, Ethan Pochich is there. All but, I want is a Super Bowl. Why is that so hard our, to attain? Our centers are going to be the Ravens' defensive backs from last year. That's I mean, yeah, found to be. Yeah, God, with JC Treader, you guys said last time we were talking, he was playing banged up, wasn't he? He was, he's know. always been banged up. Okay, well, maybe for his sake, he shouldn't go to Cleveland. You know, well, it's not even that. It's like there were multiple reports coming out saying, like, oh, like he didn't practice. And he was kind of like whatever about like. Now, mind you, this is coming from unofficial Twitter, Twitter right. Browns experts. So of course, you know it's fully valid sources. Mm-hmm. But like he was like lazy and like never really practiced too much with the team. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I read way too much of Twitter. <laughs> yeah, Twitter is a, a cesspool of garbage, but I'm the same way. I'm on it all the time. It could be worse. It could be TikTok. That's full of garbage as well. That's like my main TikTok platform. <laughs> yeah. Me and James both. That's like our shit. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm trying to get TikTok <laughs> famous. But then again, are we, we all? renegade a bunch. There you go. Yeah. Renegade while you cry and you play like the Browns fight music <laughs> in the background. <laughs> and uh, oh my god, I can't remember his name for the life of me. Who's the 28 year old quarterback you took in the first round? Your least favorite player? I can't remember his name no, for the life of me. Mother, mother, mother fucking eye, Brandon. Mother fucking Brandon Whedon. There you go. Wear your Brandon Whedon jersey. I Renegade, hate, while you cry I your eyes out and play the Browns fight music, and I'm sure you'll hit a million that, views. That'll be the peak, is if you can get Brandon Whedon to do the Renegade with you. If <laughs> get you him to get, do it. If video. you could get Brandon Whedon on this podcast, please let him know your boy phones hates you. 
not as a person, but as the fact of a 28-year-old who gets drafted in the first round. I'll just ask him how the fuck he was a 28-year-old that got drafted in the first round. Like, I, I still don't understand the process there. I was young when that happened, so I wasn't as into the draft we when all, that happened. Very weird context, but was he a Mormon? <laughs> like, was it like a Mormon? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it, it's weird. <laughs> But, like, BYU players. BYU players go into the draft super late. Taysom Hill. Yeah, left. okay. Hey, you're right. Did a Mormon mission. Fuck you Yeah, guys. yeah. You're uh, right. You're right. It makes sense. My bad. <laughs> oh, God. We really all ha- we really do have our fucking tinfoil hats on today. <laughs> all right. Um, I don't know. Let's, let's run through the roster real quick. We talked about the quarterback situation. Brissett's fine. Uh, if he's your starter, sure. He can play football. I feel like that's basically the analysis of every single player we've talked about. He can play football. <laughs> this is a fucking mess. Um, you know, it's only a me- it's only a mess if you make it a mess. And that's true. So far, so far, we're pretty we're doing all right. Yeah. All right. So, running back room. I guess we've talked about already. Like Nick Chubb is top three running back in football. Absolutely fantastic. And then I think he's, I think he's arguably top two. I think he's top two. I have him at second. I have him at one, but I'm also I, I, I'm I can biased. see why. My only thing with him is he just doesn't like th- this is a hotter take from what I've been told, but I think Jonathan Taylor is the best running back in football just because on top of being a dominant rusher, he adds that element in the receiving game. Like he can, he's an efficient pass catcher. Whereas Nick Chubb isn't quite there. He can catch the ball, but he's not somebody you're going to want, you know, as a, high tier receiver, somebody you want a high volume of targets going to. And then you have Derek Henry's a complete liability in the passing game as a receiver, at least he's oh, a damn he's, good blocker. He's got the worst. He's got worst stone hands I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. But I, I see the vision with Nick Chubb being number one. It's just the fact that Jonathan Taylor's a little bit better of a pass catcher puts him ahead for me. That's, I mean, that's not surprising. We've never seen Nick Chubb take that kind of leap like that, which is why I think Kareem yeah. Hunt is going to stay here for the majority of this time. Most likely. I don't, I, ju- I just don't see how they're going to get away with paying him because he's already making, what, like $6 million a year? I don't see how you can pay your second running back much more than that. Which is why we already drafted his replacement. Right. Right. Like I like I said, I love Jerome Ford. Jerome Ford's oh, awesome. He was one of my favorite running backs in the whole class. Same. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like Very I, shocked he, he fell as far as he did. This what draft round was... did you guys end up with him in? Fourth or fifth? My lord. Fifth. Because Perry on Winfrey went right around that same yeah. area. Mm-hmm. And right. we had like Michael Woods. What's Michael that? Woods. If we're going to talk about a wide receiver that is someone to watch, Michael Woods, Oklahoma kid, has been a kind he's of a good. dog lately. He's about six foot two. Okay. Doesn't really have the flashiest numbers, but apparently that's all he's been doing is re- working really, really hard all, all season. You love to see it. You do. You love to see it. I that's love that awesome. underdog story. Absolutely. I'm the same way. But uh, with Jerome Ford, like I said, I'm a huge fan. I think he could stand to get a little loose. Like, I think he's a little stiff as a runner. But other than that, he's patient. He's tough. He's smart. He's deceptively quick. Like, he's you wouldn't think he's as quick as he is. And he's a solid pass catcher. So, like Phone said, he's your Kareem Hunt replacement. And I think paying Kareem Hunt would be going backwards, which – in all fairness, it is the Cleveland Browns, so I guess it wouldn't surprise me. He just wants to be an RB1 already. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's fair. Right. He's earned it. Mm-hmm. I agree completely. Uh, Houston? Philly? Philly. No, nah, I, I think Philly's locked in, and they want to do the whole like committee Ari- thing. Like, I could see Arizona. Fair. Arizona, I guess. Yeah, because like, they lost uh, Edmonds. It feels redundant, although Kareem Hunt's better. Yeah. I'm saying, well, I'm talking about places he could go, like he could land. Yeah. Houston, no, I, I don't think they'd go for because they got Damian yeah. Pierce and they're, they love they him. Just ride that kid. Mm. Yeah. I like Damian Pierce a lot too. Wait. Se- yeah. Hold Seattle. on. Seattle. <laughs> Seattle's Look. not going to do that because Rashad Penny had like five games where he looked like a superhuman and now everyone thinks he's the best running back in football. Yeah. That I don't understand. I, I don't hate understand Rashad why. Penny fans. Everyone I hate them. Gets about his kneecaps. Right. Shit. The dude had four productive games in out of a, in a five game stretch, there was one game in between where he had like 11 carries for 33 yards or something. And everyone wants to ignore that, but you know, double knee braces too. Like <laughs> I'm not sure, but probably I feel like I remember that for one game, but that might just be dumb brand. Yeah. Double, like, Plus they just like drafted Kenneth Walker. 
Yeah. They just drafted Kenneth Walker and Pete Carroll's already said he can see them or see him as their three down back. Rashad Penny is screwed. He's going to be the second running back in Seattle and you're not going to see him put up those type of numbers again. Kenneth Walker had arguably like a Heisman like season. Oh yeah. Walker's incredible. You know, I could see Kareem Hunt probably end up in like Detroit. I don't know who the running back is though. Uh, Jamal yeah, Williams and DeAndre Swift. Swift. And I have no faith in Swift. So I think that would be an upgrade wow. for them. I don't like Swift at all. Uh, the Swift, Swift is Swift is one of those. He's going into that year type of year where he's like, yeah, you know what? Maybe it's uh, maybe it's that boomer bust year to prove yeah. myself. All the fantasy guys love him, and I just don't see it because there's a difference between a good player and a good fantasy player, right? Yeah, I just liked him a lot. That's fair. You know, Atlanta would be smart. They could get the the dynamic duo of the wide receiver running backs in uh, Cordell Patterson yeah, and Kareem. But That'd they also just drafted a running back in Tyler Algier. Well, that's Mormon. why you. <laughs> I mean, listen. I, that's why you put guess, Cordell Patterson yeah, in the slot. Fair. That's fair. And then you have the two running backs in the backfield. They both could just go out, and Cordell yeah. Patterson runs okay. down the field. If you, that's a good point. I didn't think about moving Patterson back to receiver for some reason. You're right. I, I could get behind that. No, I I love that thought process though of like, like they finally found how to use Cordero Patterson. It's like, all right, now go out wide again. It's like, no, right. come on, you still can't run routes. We put you at running back because you can't run routes. But go run routes. How was he a first round pick? Because he's fast and he's old. Yeah, it was a long time ago. He won. Didn't he win a Super Bowl with New England? Uh, Maybe. I don't I, remember I if he was on that team or not. I swear, I swear he. Won a Super Bowl with New England. I wonder if he was on that team or not. He might. No, you might be right. Actually, let's see. Let's see if this empty head is filled with something useless. Let's see. Drum roll. Super Bowl champion. Okay. I. I. Fifty three. Oh. Okay. First the Rams. There you go. Yeah, because Patterson. That was the first time he played running back. Was in New England. Belichick put him at running back and then Chicago picked him up in free agency. He was like, okay, you're going back to receiver and he never worked out. So we let him go. Atlanta picked him up, put him back at running back and he looked really good at running back. Yeah. But the only reason the Patriots did that was because of, or out of necessity. Yeah, (laughs) you're right. It was out of necessity, but it worked. Fair. Like I'm just saying Chicago should have seen that and been like, oh, okay, we can use him as a backfield receiver, which I guess they had Montgomery and Cohen at that time, so they weren't looking for a third running back, but maybe at that point you just don't sign Patterson. Don't waste the money on a guy you don't need and doesn't fit into your offense. David Montgomery is trash. I just want to let you know that. I do not like him. (laughs) I am not a fan. I will not stand. David Montgomery slid. I will I will stand for exactly zero David Montgomery slander on my podcast. Hey, listen, you know what? Okay, you listen. You could you could tell me to kick rocks if I was insulting Darnell Mooney, money with two O's. But listen, I had a bad fantasy experience with David Montgomery. Oh, so. a bad fantasy experience. Ooh, weren't you just shitting on the fantasy over reality people? That is yeah, not fuck fantasy football fans. Like over, like overly fantasy football people. Listen, I, I, I have nothing to do during the games other than lose money on sixteen parlays. So of course I gotta do, do fantasy. You can enjoy fantasy, just don't let it corrupt your reality. That is, you, you know what? Tell seventeen-year-old me that because it is too late now. Because I will give me a time machine right now. I will go back and smack you in the face and say, if you come on my podcast and insult David Montgomery, (laughs) it's not going to end well for you. Listen, kid. (laughs) Listen, listen, phone. You're going to hold me up against the locker. Listen, phones. If you do this to me one more time, I swear to God, I'm going to kill you. I don't. David Montgomery wouldn't have even been in college at that point. He would have been a fucking high school running back, right? Six years ago. This random running back that's currently in high school that's about to go to Iowa State, you're not allowed to speak negatively about him on my podcast. <laughs> Who else went to Iowa uh, Iowa State Please that just got your thank you? Yeah. I, I keep thinking of Isaiah Spiller, but he went to A&M. Yeah. Yeah. I like Brees Hall a lot. He reminds me I'm a lot a of that. I'm very, very high on Brees Hall. Very high on Brees Hall. Yeah, Brees Hall is yeah. going to be great. He's going to be fantastic. Uh, you know, I he, think all in all, it could be worse. It could be the Jets. I think the Jets have a brighter future than you guys. 
Well, that's fair. I mean, I like just, what the Jets are doing right now. And then we don't have half our draft capital. It's totally yeah. Fine. Even without the draft capital, I just like what they're building more because you guys are in the abyss. This is a hot take, but people are or people are going to murder me over this take. But I, I think Andrew Barry sucks at drafting. Wow, that is a hot take. Barry. Very, but if you look back, I mean, like, look at like the drafts that he's had over the years, and like, they've been pretty garbage. I mean, built a pretty damn good offensive line, didn't he? Well, I mean, that's totally fair. But we tra- Joel Petonio was there before he was there. Yeah. So was J.C. Treader. Uh, Joel uh, Wyatt Teller was a trade. Jack Conklin was a signing, and yeah. Jedrick Wills. I mean, it truly it is hard to fuck up the 10th overall pick in a draft. Okay. Yeah. We just so happen yeah. to be pretty average at landing a, a, the number one consensus offensive lineman when he falls in her lap. So, yeah, I, guess I was just to- trying to use that as a transition, by the way, I wasn't actually trying to hype up Andrew Barry. I just want to bring up the offensive line. Oh, well, then, you know, go right ahead. Don't mind. Well, I mean, you, you touched on it. Everyone here except for the center is solid. If Conklin can stay healthy and Wills can bounce back, bounce back, you could have, I'm not going to say a top five offensive line just because I don't know what the hell's going to happen at center, but a pretty damn solid offensive line. And any of the running backs that are running behind it are going to be able to be productive because a good offensive line is pretty much all that you need to have a good run game at this point. Um, I was going to say a fullback as well, but apparently Johnny Stanton's the tight end now. So, I mean, it's a man of many traits. He's the he's it's the Taysom Hill effect. You're going to play every position we right. want you to play. Yeah. Who knows? He'll play. You know. I mean, I'm sure he'll still take snaps at fullback, but on the depth chart, he's listed as the third tight end now. Or, I'm sorry, the fourth tight end. Fullback tight end by day, Dungeon and Dragons leader by night. I, it's just Johnny. Is Stanton's that a thing? He is well, a big D and D guy. Apparently. That's awesome. I didn't know that. That's sick. I didn't know that. Big it's D&D actually really guy. cool. It's really cool. Imagine a fullback playing D and D. Imagine a fullback room playing D and D. I'm pretty sure Wyatt Teller plays D and D with him. That's that's oh, even better. That is so of, random, and I love that. I know. That is incredible. I mean, Wyatt Teller is the most like yeehaw Southern dude on the team. <laughs> He's like, yeah, fuck it. Dungeons and Dragons. I like Wyatt Teller a lot. Uh, I think Wyatt whenever Teller is I, awesome. Whenever I think of him, I just think of him always having just like a fat lip. Yeah. Of, like Copenhagen. Mm-hmm. Just... mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I like Wyatt Teller a lot, but I'm uh, – Unfortunately, off the Batonio train in terms of a person, but I like him as a player. Top three guard in football. But he came out the other day and was kind of saying some stuff that was sending it defending Watson, and I didn't like that very much. Yeah. I didn't see any of that. Yeah, he said something like, everyone's treating us like the bad guys now, and I think we should embrace it and just be the bad guys. Oh. Like. No. <laughs> yeah. Let's not, let's, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's a cool statement you got there. Should have saved that one. We should have saved that one. Be ashamed if uh someone never brought that up ever again. All yeah. Right. Be yeah. ashamed if someone went back in a time machine and beat up middle school you. <laughs> beat up time. middle school Joel Batonio. Which <laughs> listen, you, he's you're probably in ten like, years or twenty or not twenty, like fifteen years. I, I don't even know if he's thirty yet. I think he is thirty. No, I think he's, he's sub thirty. Yeah, he's like 26, 27. Got drafted maybe? in 2014, though. Holy shit. Okay, maybe he is almost 30. Mm-hmm. Hey, Google again. <laughs> James has just been our walking Google machine today. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think Batonio is great. Like I said, he, I did my yeah. offensive. How old is he? 30 flat. 30 flat, okay. But yeah, I did my uh, offensive line. Uh, rankings the other day on TikTok, and Adam is the third best guard in football, but I, I can't stand with him. He's going to be subtly saying that he's on Deshaun Watson's side. I mean, I, you know, I, here's the thing, though, is like you, you kind of have to, you know, defend your quarterback, and I don't think he's defending him from a personal off the field standpoint. No, I just he's think not, he's but you can him. just, no one else has done it, is my point. He's the only one that's been like, like you, you can just, Keep quiet. The Fifth Amendment, you know, just plead the Fifth. Like anytime anyone brings up Watts, and you don't, you don't got to. He, you barely know the guy. You know, this isn't. It's not like it's a quarterback you've been blocking for for years. This is a guy that just came to town in the midst of everything going on. Like, 
I don't know if this was Aaron Rodgers right guard or like if this was David Bakhtiari and Aaron Rodgers, that's one thing. Cause they're like, you know, they've been around each other for years, but new quarterback comes into town and we're already defending them in that aspect. I just, I, I'm just not a fan. It could be right worse. Now. He could have went full Terrell Owens. It's <laughs> my quarterback. He could have. That's true. It's my quarterback. It's unfair. Oh my. <sighs> You know what's really funny? You're not the first person for these team previews to make that reference. Did a Cowboys fan make that no, reference? No, a Vikings fan did. I mean, I'd cry too if Kirk Cousins was my quarterback because he's, he's just actually, a bucket, of, it's a bucket yeah. of mid. Yeah, pretty much. But he was saying that uh, wishing for Teddy Bridgewater to come back. He was calling Teddy Bridgewater his quarterback. Um. There was a yeah, point I mean, he showed a lot of promise. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't blame him. I don't know, where, where is he now? Uh, uh, Miami. He's two as backup. I think he's pulling the Josh McCown career. I like what he's doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Goes to like half the teams and barely starts. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if he's in the Browns uniform eventually. He's like 36, can barely walk on his other knee. and it's just... Maybe that's who y'all trade for instead of Jimmy G because he's a lot cheaper. You know, I... Can we sub out Kevin Stefanski for Sean Payton too? I mean, you know, <laughs> I just, like Stefanski. I don't have a problem with Stefanski. He sucks. He's so he doesn't discipline his players. Oh, fair. Okay, I was looking at it more from a, a schematic. Play calling is average. He's, he's just a good-looking younger coach. That's all he is. He's just there for stand on the yeah. sidelines and look pretty. True. His team worked for a year. He didn't really adapt beyond that, and he's no. been. Funny yeah, that's, that's true. Part. That's true. I'm just a sucker for any coach that runs a wide zone. That's fair. Like I, I'm, I'm obsessed with that shit. But that's that's fair. That's definitely fair. I wasn't the discipline thing is very true. That's, that's a very fair. valid criticism. I mean, it's, and, in preseason, like the first play we got called for offsides. I'm like, it's preseason. Yeah. I, how how hard is it to stay still? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. I mean, I understand. There's like, you know, you're you're calculate, you're, you're counting down in your head like a mental clock, like one, two, three, go, like, but like still, like, <laughs> just it's this, just the same Browns. It's this, just the yeah. same team all over again. Just this, just disguised with different players. Yeah. Now, uh, just to get back on topic here, running through the roster. Phones obviously brought up Michael Woods as somebody to watch. Are there any other receivers in this room that you have any sort of faith in if, God forbid, something were to happen to Amari Cooper or if you just need somebody to step up? Um, I mean, you know, they actually called me in to do some practicing and run some drills. So, okay. you know, uh, be sure to look out for your boy Phones on the sidelines. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. For it. Give me that dude who waits outside of First Energy. I'm like, <laughs> give me a tryout. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly who I am. It's a. Um, uh, it's the oh my god! It's Damon Invincible. Sheehy. It's the Damon Sheehy uh, Giuseppe all over Sheehy? again. There's an extra H in there, and I forget where it was, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. We got OBJ's cleats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damon Sheehy Giuseppe. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's like the the Mark Wahlberg movie Invincible, where it was legitimately an average Joe that got called up because they're having open tryouts, and he made the team somehow. I mean, listen, I mean, Kurt Warner. Warner was bagging groceries and won a Super Bowl. So did he win? Yeah. A, did Kurt Warner, Warner win a Super Bowl? Yeah. 2001? 2000? I can't remember. I think it was the same year he got signed, wasn't it? I think so. Because you had the – they won the – it was the greatest show on turf. Uh, they beat the Titans where – I can't remember the receiver's so, name, but was he was like – one-yard line extension? Yeah, yeah he was yeah, like yeah, an yeah. inch off on the yeah, last play. yeah. I can't remember what year it was. So, but. I mean, I would say if there was a receiver to watch for, if he was healthy, I'd say Isaiah, Isaiah Weston. Okay. He came out of Northern Iowa, or maybe it was, uh, I think it was Christian. I don't, I don't know where he went to school. He was in, uh, it was. A, James? Uh, I don't remember well, where he went to check school. Check what school he went to. Isaiah oh. Weston. He went to Northern <laughs> Iowa. I want to say, maybe I'm completely wrong. I thought you called me out like a teacher because I like looked off. And like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm here. <laughs> So who's he talking about? What receiver is he talking about? Are you Isaiah saying West. class? Isaiah okay. Weston. Yeah, Northern Iowa. I was right. Okay. Let's go. I'm on, oh, I'm on my game. Okay. I'm on go my shit today. Valid. I didn't hear I am, I am on my – yeah, so he, big Iowa. kid, ran uh, I think a 4-4, 40 time, a 
you know, had a really good college career. If he was healthy, I know he tore his ACL in practice. So it's the year of the ACL for this Browns team. But other than that, I personally think Demetri Felton's going to take a step up there, and that's just because, one, the lack of depth, and two, right. he was kind of that gadget player at UCLA that I don't think he's gotten a chance to like really showcase in the offense this year. So yeah. we're going to see a lot of different stuff. We're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of running back, wide receiver versatility. Mm-hmm. So. so, I mean, easy answer is you look at David Bell. But yep. That's not fun. I completely uh, forgot oh, okay. he was even – I completely – Completely forgot he was on this team. <laughs> All right, you give the fun answer, and then I'll talk about David Bell because I'm a David Bell stan. Uh, somebody I've been waiting for a breakout from is on the tight end group. I love Harrison Bryant. Mm-hmm. I loved him in college. I loved him at Florida Atlantic. He won the best tight end in the country, like the, the year he was drafted. Lord. Yeah, what I, I, I like, I should know that as like a college football fan, but I just don't. <laughs> I don't know, but he, he was great. He is great. He can play this like receiving threat tight end that we wanted, want David and Joku, I guess now to get to yeah. be Harrison Bryant's that dude. I'm expecting him to take the huge step forward this year. I, you know, and my only concern with him is that I think David and Joku is so overpaid because we, I know we talked about this last time. We both mm-hmm. believe he's so overpaid and yeah. that's just because his production is not where it's at. In terms of like a Darren Waller, a Travis Kelsey, a George Kittle, et cetera. It could he get there? Sure. But has he shown any type of progress towards it? Nah. Eh. He had that one good yeah. game against the Chargers, and then it was kind of like, oh my God, David and Joku's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh my God, he must be the new. Uh, like, bro, I remember when Gary Barnish was on this team catching oh. passes oh, and just being that's a, a god. Name. That was a guy who had the most potential in the world. Now, here's a guy. <laughs> now, you take this guy right here, okay? Um, no, I, I completely agree. I think Harrison Bryant's going to be elite. I also don't I, – I think it's just because he's jacked, but I don't get where the perceived athleticism is with David Njoku. Because when you watch him run in the open field, he looks like he shit his pants. Like, that, that's yeah. the only way you can describe his run style. It's like, oh, my God. Like, he Some guys like just look like they pooped their pants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe I will he, say – to, to praise David and Joku, he's getting better as a run blocker. He, he's improving. He was never he was never like that. Yeah, but I mean he's it, it's it's on the uptick. Maybe he can develop something there. Maybe you get into a world where Ninjoku or God Ninjoku Injoku is just like the most overpaid blocking tight end number two behind Harrison Bryant. Wouldn't shock me. Yeah, we did that with Austin Hooper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very God, true. What you know, you you look at a you look at a garbage fire, a train crash, a car wreck, two two planes just smashed into each other. It's I mean that is the, it's that contract, it's yeah. that Austin Hooper contract. I mean he was so good in Atlanta his final year, and it it, it amazed me how much he just fell off a cliff. Oh. Well. That's what happens when you go from Matt Ryan to Baker, was it Baker at the time. Yeah. Baker Reagan Mayfield. Is that his middle name? Baker yeah. Reagan. Yeah. I like that. It's a nice middle name. That's uh, super the, Texas, isn't it? Damn five, straight. Five foot six, 300 pound quarterback, Baker Reagan Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, like James said, I like David Bell a lot. I know he's the boring answer, but. He's a damn good receiver. He was somebody that I really wanted Chicago to look into, but unfortunately, he didn't uh, end up on our That's on like, our did team. You just want Chicago to look into a receiver? Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> to put it bluntly, yes. But listen, the second uh, the two second round picks we spent, I'm happy with. Jaquan Brisker looked like a dog in his first preseason yeah. game. I'm so excited for him. I do and, love Brisker. Yeah, and I mean Kyler Gordon's supposed to be a pretty solid. Uh, Number two corner, so I'm not too upset with that. I think corner was a bigger liability for Chicago than receiver, uh, watching how they played last year. But either way, I mean, you got a guy who's really good technically. His uh, he's very polished. He's got very quick feet. He's really good at just sitting down and finding his place in his own and being open. Which, if you have a quarterback that's probably going to be Jacoby Brissett, who isn't the greatest, going to take a lot of pressure off him. He's not going to have to try to fit it into a ton of tight windows. Um, it, he's his only. Issue is just that he's not a great athlete. Oh no. Okay. I just had Go a ahead. question. I just had a Go question. Ahead. No, or I had really more a statement. I think Brett Coleman 
actually made a made a point of this. David Bell is a product of a team where it's not the fact that he's the best receiver; it's the fact that he's just the only option on his team, like on a bad Purdue Fair. team, which is why he got so many targets. Yeah, I'm not saying he's bad. I think he's a good. No, I actually I, think he's a really good player. Yeah. I just think the reason he's not held so highly up against all the other wide receivers in this class is because of the fact that he was kind of the only option on that Purdue team. Yeah, I'm I thought you were that because then you're just ignoring the fact that Rondale Moore existed at the same time span with him. He had one year without. Well, Rondale. I think yeah, I think he's just referring to his last year. I'm just Purdue. saying over this past last season. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Rondale I, Moore was dog. I thought you were about to completely destroy me liking David Bell. No, I, I agree completely. I love David Bell. Yeah, you actually kind of beat me to the punch because I was going to bring up that exactly Brett Coleman. I'm a huge Brett Coleman fan. Who is and it? Yeah, I mean, I had Brett Coleman on my podcast, dude. That was like... Really? Yeah, when we talked about the Houston Texans, he came on. That was a bucket list item. Straight up, that was some bucket list shit. It was awesome. No. I got Brett Coleman to come on and praise fullbacks and everything. Now, listen, here's what you need. You need to go on YouTube. You need to go on the YouTube train list. You need to go. You need to find like Bangle. You know, I like tried Bangle. Didn't get him, to get unfortunately. New York Giants. Oh, God. I got Urinating Tree for the Steelers. He came on. I love Urinating Tree. I uh, I was in talks with Brandon Perna to come on and talk about like the, about the Broncos. Like he actually responded to my DM, but yeah, he hasn't responded to me since. So I guess he got busy, which I mean, it's fine. I don't care. I'm not heartbroken by it or anything. I had a uh, five points vids on for the giants. That's great. That's yeah. awesome. Dude. It's That's crazy awesome. what Twitter can do for you. Cause I just shot DMS out and they responded. I think I messaged you on TikTok. Yeah. Or I messaged you. I found your TikTok on my for you page. And I yeah. messaged you on Twitter. I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'll go. I'll go for it. Let's yeah. do it. I had a, uh, Theo Ash, I mean, he's mainly TikTok, but I had him on for the Packers. Completely same situation, although I'm kind of pissed off at him right now because he's pushing some anti-Devin Hester agendas, and I'm not a fan. Devin Hester and Josh Cripps, the greatest returners of all time. And he was trying to say Patterson's the best last night. Pure Cordell Patterson. Yes. He was saying that Patterson is a better football player than Devin Hester just because Patterson has a little bit of relevancy on offense. Theo, you're killing me here as a Packers fan. You're absolutely I, killing me here. I saw a reply somewhere. It was some older guy, like 40s, maybe early 50s, replied to the uh, tweet. And he said, listen, son, just turn on the highlights. Yeah, <laughs> and like, I mean, that's, that's the only argument you need for Hester, really. I mean, didn't he take that? Didn't he take the lead kickoff? In the Super Bowl back. Only player in Russia. NFL history to take the opening kickoff in a Super yep. Bowl to the house. Mm-hmm. Electric. And they were Electric. playing Welcome to the Jungle through the stadium and everything. Like it was a different breed of electricity. I'm saying that like I was there. I was four years old. You know, three if years you, old, almost four. If we look at like where the rowdiest fans are, like you put on like a Virginia Tech when they play uh, some Metallica. I forget what song it is. It's Enter Sandman, yeah. Sandman, yeah. Okay. yeah I've, I've, I don't know why I blanked on that for a second. <laughs> and you uh, like Florida State's like the Tomahawk Chop. Like you got like Welcome to the Jungle when Devin Hester was there. Like there are that that can throw you off as a fan. Or mm-hmm. That can throw you off as a player. Like mm-hmm. that is just a magic to my eyes yeah. to watch fans go out, go yeah. at it with each other. Did you see? Uh, did you see the video on? Uh, I think someone put it on TikTok or Twitter. It was uh, some Jaguars fans yes. screaming. Yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, my Deshaun god! Watson, I was like, oh Loved my it. god! I was so proud of them. I really was. I was waiting for the next video of security telling them to leave. I was waiting for that video <laughs> to come out. Yeah, I. Uh, oh, it's gonna god, be an interesting scared. seventeen weeks, but six, eighteen. Yeah, eighteen weeks, boys. Yeah. We'll see what happens on the bye. <laughs> <laughs> when All is right. our bye week? I'm not nine, sure. Six, nine. It's either seven or nine. I don't know. I don't either. All right. Uh, well, he does that. Uh, <laughs> we'll the we can prep. Oh, what? Oh, you were laughing at something. I thought you pulled something up in your phone. No, I was just okay. stop pulling it up. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I, like, I got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, I got you. People are gonna listen to this podcast and just be like, "When are they gonna start talking about the Browns?" Nine, I mean, by the way. Never. Ta- That's the goal. Yeah, Never. 
listen, it's the Cleveland Browns. I think this podcast, even if there's no technical issues, is very fitting just because we're completely off topic. It's okay. It's all right. Yeah. We don't want it to, as Browns fans, we don't want to talk about it either. All right. Well, I'll give you something you should want to talk about. Let's talk about this edge rusher duo because they're a bright spot. Best in the league. I'm not going to go that far, but they're top five. Well, I am because I am a biased fan. Fair enough. <laughs> I, respect it. I respect it completely. Oh, no, Amazon. they're they're top five. They're top five. They, they complement each other very well. Mm-hmm. We saw a good glimpse from uh, Alex Wright in preseason too. Oh, really? Yeah, I think he got to the quarterback one time, but okay, uh, he looked good all game. He's getting there. It's gonna be it's gonna be very weird. I don't know what like the defensive line is an okay line, but outside outside of Miles Garrett and Jadavian Clowney, you have like Perry on Winfrey and Tommy Togi. You have a lot of just unproven middle of the pack type of guys. Yeah. I'm still high on Curtis Weaver. Oh my God. Kid. Yeah. I loved him coming out of college. I really yeah. wish I, I really hope his NFL career turns out very well, but yeah, no, it's, it's an interesting, it's a pretty deep group. Actually. It's just unproven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's good, but unproven. Watching Jordan Elliott yeet Trevor Lawrence to the ground was pretty awesome too. I think he's going to have a pretty solid year. I mean, I don't think he's going to have a great year. Nothing like nothing to be like, oh my god, like he's the next Aaron Donald. But he's definitely going to give you some good production on the when he plays on the field. Yeah, yeah I was going to say I like him a lot as a depth piece. He's not somebody I'd want starting, but he's a nice jack of all trades coming out in a rotational sense. Oh yeah, he's someone that like analytics Twitter loves. Of course they do. <laughs> yeah. Like they can go into the deep stats of why he's great, and I'm like, all right, but watch him. <laughs> yeah, like, son, turn on the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I like Phone said. I'm a big fan of Curtis Weaver. I think he's a hell of an athlete. It's just that his final year, he kind of felt out of place in their scheme, so his production plummeted, and that really, really hurt his draft stock. But I think if they find a use for him, he can be a, a stellar ball player for them. And then obviously the other defensive lineman you draft, or the other, I guess he's an edge rusher, uh, Isaiah Thomas. I like him a lot too. Crazy athlete. He just needs, he's a bit of a fixer upper, but the athleticism's there. And I can understand why you want to bank on that kid's upside because he could be a hell of a ball player too. Oh, absolutely. Here's the thing though, is again, it's, it's, it's not that like, um, it's not the situation of the wide receiver room where there's, very little to no talent. There's right. a lot of talent there. It's just going to be dependent on if it can get unlocked by yeah. the defensive coordinator and the offensive or the defensive line coaches. And it, it'll be definitely interesting. It's going to be like a a growing pain to watch because there's going to be a lot of highs against some really bad offensive line teams and a lot of lows against very good offensive right. line teams. Yeah, so we'll see. I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be exciting to watch these guys develop, but. It, it's yeah. it's going to come down to if they stay disciplined. I mean, penalties have killed us. So, I want. I just want to. I just finally want to see a team that doesn't, you know, push a coach when you're on the sidelines and get you suspended in the first game. Ronnie Harrison, I'm looking at you. Push a Kansas City coach, and get suspended <laughs> a game. That. I forgot about that. Free yeah. free Ronnie Harrison. He did nothing wrong. Yeah, I'm a. Uh... I'm really excited to watch uh, Tommy Togiai. Is that how you say his name? Yeah. I'm Ohio excited State to see point. him in year two. Because he. I would say he's probably your best, at least most established interior defensive lineman right now. And, I mean, he's he's got a little bit of quickness to him. He's a pretty good run defender. I, I, I think he could be primed for, I'm not going to say a breakout year, but a step up to prove that he's a, a solid starter at the very least. Because I think he complements Perry on Winfrey, Winfrey Rutt win free well if i can get the words out of my mouth because winfrey is one of the worst run defending prospects i have ever seen but god is that kid gonna get into the quarterback like if he was even a half decent uh run defender he easily could have been a late first round pick like i i think he's incredible getting off the ball and getting to the quarterback he's like a i saw somebody i can't remember who it is off the top of my head but i was watching a, a like a breakdown on him after right after the draft and somebody described him as like a ball of lightning at defensive tackle and i don't think you could come up with something more accurate i think that was jackson kruger actually i'm pretty sure that maybe that was him that was doing a al- prospect analysis i don't know maybe i've never I've heard, heard of that, that I've, guy, heard, but... I, I've heard that reference i've heard that reference before. okay phones who was the undrafted free agent 
last year from Florida State that was like a defensive tackle that we overpaid like a motherfucker just to get cut. Oh, that was uh, Marvin Hall. Think- yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought he was going to be. No, beat. no, no, that wasn't. That wasn't. I know who you're talking about, though. Isn't Marvin um, Hall a receiver? Yes, Marvin Hall was okay. a receiver for the Browns last year. That, okay, um, that's why. Florida State defensive tackle. Stayed there for three. I I'm I can look at him. I'm seeing uh, this. I'm pulling a Stephen Wonder. Like Stevie we, Wonder we right now. We paid him absurd, like three hundred. We so he we we actually signed him prior to the draft ending, actually, which is funny. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that was the thing. Yeah, apparently they just decided to sign the guy right right then and there, and I was like, okay, this is what's going to happen right now. Lit, lit, I'm not even kidding. Like before the draft ended, they signed him. Interesting. Oh, man, sure? I, the first article I can Marvin Wilson. The thank first you. article I can find is Cleveland Brown lands 2021's undrafted gem in Florida State defensive tackle Marvin Wilson. Cut. Did Mel That's Piper cool. write that headline? Maybe. <laughs> Let's see. Does it? Does the following article say Jimmy Clausen the greatest quarterback since Kurt Warner? It was Chris Knox. Irrelevant. Um. Anyway, that's a uh, alias. Yeah. It's not a real person. But does he know why my name is Phones? I think not. <laughs> mm-hmm. The biggest NFL mystery of the season. Absolutely. I, uh, I'm i looking at my notes here just to double check some stuff. And while I agree with Phones that there's a lot of upside on this defensive line, I have written down that it's squishy. And I think that's very accurate, at least for the interior. Okay, like, how are you defining squishy? They're not very good against the run. Like if they're someone's just going to run right through the interior of that line. Yeah, and that's fine. And our linebackers have no ability to tackle someone, anyways. Yeah. Like I would never have guessed squishy equated to bad run defense. I'm well, I mean, just because like you can you can just kind of push them away. Yeah, you can just you, you can know just you, squish right through them. They're like they're, a they're, they're like a like dog. Killer. You can just they'll just roll over and you they pet yeah. the belly and yeah, they just got a squishy stomach. You know. Yeah. Dog check. <laughs> rough yeah because like who else is on this defensive line Taven Bryan he's an awful run defender he just gets completely overwhelmed um dude just stand up straight on stuff he shouldn't be playing interior defensive line that's why he's built like he has the skill set of an edge rusher but they made him put on weight to play interior defensive line and it just didn't work and now he's stuck he's just fat and sad pretty much yeah I mean, you know, you're making a few million dollars a year, so if you're fat, and can't sad, be too sad. I'd rather cry in a Lamborghini than a Honda Civic. So, yeah, true. But I, I will say, I think they have some interesting potential to set up some different packages on early, or uh, pass obvious pass downs because you can move Miles Garrett inside and have like Winovich and Clowney coming off the edge, and then if you have Garrett and Winfrey as your two defensive tackles, that would be a sick pass rush. It's just you can't pull that four downs because, like I said, Winfrey's a complete liability against the run, and you want Garrett on the outside the majority of the time. You're probably going to be smart enough to move Clowney on the inside for a little bit. I mean, fair vet- veteran presence, you're going to want your best edge rusher at staying at his position because you know fair it's going to happen. Plus, Miles Garrett's really fast. Yeah. I, met, I met him in person, and I'll tell you what, right now, he is just as scary in person. I'm sure as he is. So that, that is a. He was just as fast. Like you're like, I gotta chase. I, I, him. <laughs> I'm, I am, I'm not kidding. At the gym, I was at my gym, and I'm hitting squats, and I look over, and I just look up, and I continue to look up, and Miles Garrett's right there, and I look at him, I go, "Are you Miles Garrett?" And he goes, "No, no, I'm not." I'm like, oh, "Okay, okay, He's, yeah, I am." I'm like, oh, oh, "Cool, what's up, man?" Did you pull out your stopwatch and ask him to run so you could see if he was as fast a person? <laughs> no, but he squatted 500 pounds in front of me, and I was like, oh, my God, this man's going to be a freak athlete. Who was the uh, – you talked about this the last time we recorded. Who was the fullback you met before? Oh, Dan Vitale. That's Dan my Vitale, boy. that's right. That's, that's my boy. Right. I thought you were going to say I, th- I mentioned Mitch Trubisky. I was like, that's my You did mention dude. that, too. That's my boy. That's my boy, Mitch. Yeah. Mitch kissing titties Trubisky. That's yeah. my guy. Oh, I love it. I was gonna say you 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 know or have met a lot of NFL players, a lot, a lot of like relevant ones at that. Uh, Denzel Ward, uh, Dan Vitale, Miles Garrett. Uh, who else have I met? 
Josh Cribs, I'm cool with. Um, who did I just say? Uh, who did I Miles just say? Garrett. Yeah, Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett, Mitch, Miles Garrett, Denzel Ward, uh, Dan Vitale, and you said uh, Josh Cribs. Yeah, Josh Cribs. Yeah, I've met a lot of cool people. That's really cool. I yeah. have the syndrome of meeting a lot of cool just people at random. Like That's I was at awesome. Chipotle, I was at Chipotle, and the guy behind me was Denzel Ward, and I was like, <laughs> "Like you're Denzel Ward?" He's like, "Yeah, what's up, man?" I was like, "Cool, what's up, man?" Well, all the stories you've told seem positive. I'm glad none of them are like, yeah, what the fuck do you want? I've never truly met a bad NFL player. That's good. Never. That's never. really good. Andrew Wiggins told me no. I asked him for an autograph one time, and he said no. Then you NBA, pulled out your stopwatch and said, how fast are you? <laughs> yeah. I, was, I should have asked him. I'm like, hey, you want to know why my name's Phones, too? <laughs> you got to uh, – next time you meet an NFL player, you're going to introduce yourself as Phones and then tell them the story. Yeah. Oh, I will. I will. I'm just going to embarrass myself. Great. That's I'm going to make, I'm going to make sure either the girl that I'm going on the date with, or my dad is with me too, just to make it any better and be like, hi, how are you? Phones. Nice to meet you. Hey, you want to know why my name's phones actually? <laughs> oh, Let's just God. hope you don't run into Sean Watson with that one. Oh, I mean, you know, if, if oh. destiny call, if destiny calls, <laughs> but if she's off, maybe charity's on, maybe charity's on the other line. Okay. Um, oh, Speaking of Denzel Ward, I know we're sk- I don't want to skip over the line- shit. I just dropped my phone. I was going to say, God. speaking of Denzel Ward, let's talk about the secondary, but we still got to talk about the linebackers because I love JOK. Well, outside of him, there's nothing. I mean, right. I was about to say, yeah. It's, it's a paper. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing to talk about. They're just paper bags. Well, Jacob yeah. Phillips is still unproven. Sioni Takitaki is mid as hell. Mm-hmm. It's okay, run. Okay, run defender, but eh, pretty mid overall. Anthony yeah. Walker is more or less just a veteran presence there. And out, again, outside of JOK, there's nobody that I'm very yeah. confident in that's going to take that step up. JOK is the best linebacker I have seen in a very long time. Oh, I think he's a top 10 linebacker already. Oh, he's, there's no question. Okay. No question. I've but, gotten some shit for that take. I think he's awesome. I don't know why he... Yeah, but then in the same vein, if you did that with Micah Parsons, it would be okay. It's just because they don't... Right. I, I mean, I have them both as top 10 linebackers. I think they're which both... Which is incredible. reasonable. Which is, but they also I, play two different styles as well. So I think Yeah, but I mean, they're still that. both off-ball linebackers. Oh, yeah. So I, I group them together. I'm not going to say, like, Micah Parsons is technically an off-ball hybrid edge linebacker pass rusher thing you know, if you were to put micah parsons on that on a defensive line scale though where would you put him in terms of an edge rusher i think he's still a top 10 edge rusher i think he might he's going to be a little bit lower than i'd rank him as a linebacker but i would still say he's like a top 10 edge rusher that's fair that's fair but like i'll tell you right now i think he's a top three linebacker i don't think he's a top three edge rusher but i mean okay who who's the two guys in front of him Fred Warner and Darius Leonard. And I think Leonard even then is kind of iffy, but I think Fred Warner is by far the best linebacker in football. No no question. No question. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It. I think I would say with that top three, Leonard and Parsons are interchangeable. Like, I wouldn't be mad having either one over the other. We'll see. I want to see another season of him before. Fair I can enough. Make, uh, I, I can I can understand that. So I'm more of a baseball guy, I'll be honest with you, than a football guy. However, this logic still applies to me. Is I don't think I, I think or the rookie season and the pressure that people put on rookies, especially when they're first starting their career, is so irrelevant that regardless mm-hmm. if they're gonna do good or bad, it will never determine the outcome of their future. Peyton Manning, I think, did he have like the most interceptions? Yeah, he had a his, horrendous rookie. I year. mean, like. Kurt Warner like didn't even start playing football like professionally until he was later in his career. Like mm-hmm. uh, uh, Mark Sanchez went to the AFC Championship game and still is only known for the butt fumble. Like you know, right. like there's so many different things that like again, but the logic applies to the same way regardless of the same different sports. Is is the rookie year is so irrelevant? Yeah. In terms of just like the number of production and anything like that, that like the pressure you put on them is stupid because what you want them to succeed, like. They can only do so much in the rookie year. I agree with that, but I also think the past two years, at least in the NFL, I don't follow baseball, so I can't speak on it. But the last two years in the NFL, we have seen so many 
beyond talented rookies oh, that I think we're starting to see more exceptions like Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Kyle Pitts, Micah Parsons. There's always going to be that exception though. I'm, I'm right, not but I'm just down, saying I'm they're, they're becoming more frequent to the point where I think we're going to start to see that tide turn a little bit and people are going to be more sure. less hesitant, I guess is how I'll put it to put rookies like that highly. But I do agree. Like obviously as a Bears fan, Justin Fields had a God awful rookie year, but I don't think that means he's a bust. I don't think that means he's a bad quarterback. Or anything like that. If you gave him a top 10 offensive line, do you think he would have had as bad of a season as he did? No, not by any means. Give him a top 10 offensive line in a uh, coach that isn't actively working against him, and he would have had a, an average year. I, I don't think he would have won like rookie of the year or anything, but he, he would have looked like a more competent quarterback, and people wouldn't be crying because he threw seven touchdowns and 10 interceptions. Because the kid had no time in the pocket. He was not schemed outside of the pocket at all. He was like one of the best quarterbacks in the league on design quarterback rollouts. And there were 15 called throughout the entire season for him. Like that, that's, that's criminal. To be that's fair, insanity. when you have Jason Peters on the left side of your offense. Peters line. was our best offensive lineman. Peters had a damn solid year. I just remember him just getting destroyed by the Miles Garrett. Well, yeah, that's Miles Garrett. <laughs> Like 90% of offensive tackles are getting absolutely destroyed by Miles Garrett. He's the best pass rusher in football. I'm, it, glad, I'm glad you said Miles is instead of TJ Watt. I'm very happy. Yeah. That we... I, I think I, I'm not going to say there's a gap between them. I think they're close and I understand the argument for TJ, but I personally think Miles is better. Okay. To save our time's sake, should we move to the corners? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause we're, yeah. we're going to work. We could go down this rabbit hole of like mm -hmm. just for days. Yeah, I like I said with the linebackers, I agree. There's nothing much there. Anthony Walker is like a jack of all trades, master of none, second linebacker, which is fine. It, it never hurts to have a guy like that. I just wanted to bring up JOK because he needs his roses. He, he is phenomenal. Gonna move into the. I'm gonna say a hot take. Top gonna be a top five linebacker by the end of the season. Um, it's my hot take. I'm a. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to think. Hold on, I'm, let me look at my top 10 linebackers real quick because I actually have to make a, a video about that tonight after I hop off here for TikTok. I mean, you would have to see... I could see him because some of the... Outside of the top three, some of the higher echelon linebackers are getting up there in age. So I guess you could see them start to like take a step back. Like I've got Demario Davis in my top five and he's like, what, 32 now? right around there. There's a world where he takes a step back. And I, I, I guess if that happens, I can see him jumping up. I don't think that's crazy. It's definitely a hot take, but I don't think it's crazy by any means. I like JOK a lot, but uh, moving to the corner, speaking of top five, you've got a top five corner in Denzel Ward as your true lockdown. Number one, insane athlete, wide receiver, eraser, whatever you want to call him. He's absolutely incredible. I mean, he could stand to work on his technique a little bit, but he's still pretty young, so that'll come with him. It's just the athletic, his athleticism, his feel and coverage, his instincts, uh, his ability to just stick to somebody. He's incredible. He is absolutely incredible. I think this group is easily like a top three cornerback group. Yeah. The secondary is the strength. If healthy. Yeah. Of course. Well, of course. Definitely if healthy. I'm just saying, like, that's that's the big thing that's been holding us back for so long is the health. Like, we were a rotating door at safety last year. Yeah. Denzel missed a couple games, I think. We talked about Greedy a while ago on that first one. Or in, in oh, the second yeah. one. He's, and you oh. know what's crazy is he we could move him to cornerback number five, and that would probably be a more appropriate place for him. A.J. Green, AJ Green. undrafted, yeah. undrafted yeah. Oklahoma State kid. Dog. He had a good pre Emerson. Game. Dog. Emerson. Dog. Emerson. That interception was Dog. nuts. That was. And if that's what if that's what he's going to bring to the table, hell yeah. Dude, like, I mean, definition of dog. If yeah, that's just him. Absolutely. Greg Newsom. Dog. Mm -hmm. Locked down Jamar Chase during that game. That was nasty. And yeah. Denzel, obviously, we already know he's got that dog mm -hmm. in him. It's, the, it's, it's, it's arguably the best secondary. It's arguably the best cornerback group in football. Definitely there's an argument to be made.
It's, I mean, it, you know, obviously Jalen Ramsey holds that like higher status of being the best guy in the league. Jair Alexander, obviously, as well. But like, truly, like, would go from not just the it's quality mixed with quantity. It's mm-hmm. five guys on an every on an any day basis that can give you at least one pick a game, and just not allow any more than maybe sixty yards. Absolutely. I don't know if it still rings true, but I think Denzel's never allowed an opponent more than 90 on him in his entire. I'm not sure, but that would be nuts if true. I know, but like Big since college, like since Ohio. Really? Was... Yeah. Mm-hmm. God damn. Man's been that dude. So he's got the, the A1 Sauce Gardner legend to his name on top of already being a proven dog in the NFL. You know, if you go and rewatch Ohio State versus Maryland, where he just lays out that absolute. Love it. Wider seat exactly just lays him happened. out. Yeah, he's he's been that dude. Yeah. I mean, I think phones hit the nail on the head by saying if you move greedy to CB5, that probably is better. Because greedy's probably my only question with this entire secondary. Because like other than flashing ear in there, what what does greedy do good other, other than I guess be quick? rap i don't know <laughs> is he a rapper I, I i don't know i've heard some sick beats from him on the hot mics okay well i got nothing other than yeah, like flash yeah. other than, brilliance <sighs> right that's what i that's what i have written down i have he shows really good flashes but he's not super physical he's not instinctive he's not the best athlete overall like he's he's just he, kind of like a depth he's corner a bucket of mid that is your favorite expression to describe this team, isn't it? It really is because it's so, it rains so true because there's really so does. much good, and yet there's so much bad, and they yeah. just sit just so well in just the middle of the pack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, it's a fantastic corner room, but I think the group I like a little bit more here is the safety room just because there's so much versatility here. I'm a sucker for a versatile safety. I know we said earlier that Grant Delpit might not be the best guy, but he's a damn good football player. He's like a baby Derwin James. That's what I think of him. He's one of those guys that you can pull him off the edge. He can play man coverage. He can play zone coverage. You can play him up in the box. He can play him as your deep safety. You might even be able to play him in the nickel if you really need to. Like he can just do a little bit of everything. He's got a crazy wingspan. He can accelerate very quickly. He's a hard hitter. He's super smart. Like he is the true Swiss Army knife type safety. He, he won the Jim Thorpe Award, I'm pretty sure, in his sophomore year of college. I think you're right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. There's a lot of award winners on this team, which is what I like. Because they're very highly accomplished players. Yeah. Uh, the more you, the more you look at it, like I'm pretty sure JOK won the best linebacker. Grant Delpit's won best safety or best uh, secondary player. John, the John Mackey with Harrison Bryant. Um, it's just a lot of accomplished guys overall. It's a lot of good. It's a lot of good players overall that I think it are going to continue to take a step forward. John Johnson, I think, needs to have a bounce back season. He was horrible last year, unfortunately. Which is, you know, we traded Troy Hill back to the Rams for a fifth round pick. He was garbage. Yeah, but I don't know. We'll see. But that's supposed yeah. to be Emerson's role, so we'll see. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, it's funny you say that because the Rams fans, when I had them on here, they were going crazy about getting Troy Hill back. They were pumped. I think just certain coaches know how to work better with yeah, certain players. I agree. It's like that LaFleur Rodgers connection. They just know how to work well with each other. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. But I, I, I agree. I like John Johnson a lot, but he does need to step it up from last year. He had a really bad year, but it was very uncharacteristic of him because he's good at everything. He's another guy. Maybe he's not quite as versatile as Delpit, but he he can still play up in the box. He has experience playing nickel corner. He can be your one deep safety if needed. He's good tackler, good instincts, good in coverage. Like he's, he's just a, again, a very well-rounded safety. And uh, then you've got Ronnie Harrison, who was another person you, you guys extended. I don't know how long his deal was, but one. Okay. Makes sense. He's just a boneheaded individual. He just is a, Oh really? Idiot. How so? Oh, yeah. Oh, what yeah. am I missing here? Well, he's been. Well, I mean, for starters, the Kansas City incident. Oh yeah, that was him, him, wasn't it? 
Mm-hmm. Push the coach okay. and got suspended that yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, that's a no no. Can't be doing yeah. that. I feel like he had something at Bama too, and I can't like. I don't I can't think it was even that. that. I think he's just he's been just like a bonehead. He's just been that constant. Like he he gets calls put on him all the time for like pass interference and everything like that. Like I'm telling you, if this team truly like functions as one solid unit and doesn't get all these penalties markups, they're actually going to be a really good above average team. But the penalties yeah. hold us back more than anything. Yeah. I agree completely. Um, I, I think that's that's kind of – there's two things holding this team back right now. It's the penalties and it's the drama because obviously that's going to translate onto the field. That doesn't just get ignored. This isn't Madden. You know, they're going to have that in their heads and they're going to be dealing with it on the field because I'm sure they're going to get chirped at a ton about their sicko quarterback and him not being on the field. Obviously, you're going from a arguably top five quarterback to a game manager at best. Like this team, again, the fans like you guys that aren't all over Deshaun Watson's nuts, for lack of better words, I feel really bad for you guys. Just bring me the seven and nine season already, and let me call or seven and ten season, and let me go watch Ohio State play some football. Oh shit! Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at too. I think I have Cleveland at either seven and ten or six and eleven uh, in terms of record prediction. I just don't care anymore. I just want a Super Bowl. I, I I don't care anymore. Yeah, I, you've you've completely emotionally drained me from <laughs> wanting to even look forward to half the shit anymore because it's one thing after another. Yeah, I mean I'm dumbly optimistic. Yeah, I, that was gonna say I knew James was gonna have the opposite take. He had that smirk on his face. <laughs> I just I, can't. I feel good. I feel good about like 99 percent of the team. <laughs> that is but that one percent is the most important one percent. That's, a, that's, a, yeah. that's a thick one percent you got. Yeah, like, didn't like that. It's got a CDL to back that ass up. It's, <laughs> it's that thick. That's a thick one percent. Mm-hmm. Gonna go to rinse my brain with. <laughs> I don't know how. I'm gonna find a way. I'm gonna get that fucking thought out of my head. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, no, I mean I'm I'm optimistic, and I, I think what for what you've given, but like Barry has done well, is get these dudes in here, these younger players who were a little bit later in the draft that weren't in those like prime positions, weren't top 100 picks. Emerson might have been a top 100 pick. I'd have to look back, but getting them into positions to succeed and just letting them ball out. And so far, as we've seen in one preseason game, which means it's totally true, it's happening. So. I'm optimistic. Yeah. See, I, I want to be, but like, I just can't do it. Yeah. I just can't do it. And I know the second that I doubt them, they're going to start winning. And then I'm going to be like, this is really what I'm going to have to do right now and sit there for four hours on Sundays and watch football. I mean, listen, personally, as someone who is also a fan of a team that has been something. Uh, throughout my life they have been a football team we they have before. been a football team right i uh i find it's better to expect disappointment that way if anything happens anything positive happens you can you can be surprised and you can enjoy it a little bit more this is my expectation level so there you go if you guys win a football game a football game winning yeah. a football game is my expectation well the thing is like even if we lose at this point like say we just completely shit the bed it's like a three and whatever season uh it's not like we have like a first round pick to look forward to i was gonna say yeah season. it's just all right i guess we'll just try again next year yeah hope it all works itself out yeah cj stroud would look so good in that brown and orange i wanted cj we i was like did. let's just run baker do the one more year and then get cj in. that's but then exactly at the same what point, i was thinking you're just you're just creating this vicious cycle of doing the same thing over and over again that we've yeah. been doing that's okay now I do want to ask real quick because I think we're about wrapped up. How bad is it going to hurt if Baker comes out and just absolutely trounces y'all week one? I don't. I'll turn on the. I know you don't care. Call today I'll just call. It's I can't go on Twitter. I mean, right. the, the people that are going to care are like the fifty-year-old men who are like, 
Oh my god, I was right. The Baker bros are gonna come out of the, the, the woodworks and just the old like, white men who I hate told, Watson for all I, the wrong reasons. I told you, I told you, <laughs> I told you Baker told you Baker Mayfield was the answer. He's always gonna be the answer. He's gonna win a Heisman jar, he's gonna win a, an MVP in Carolina. I mean, they're gonna go back to the Super Bowl. I'm like, oh my god. Nick Adams is gonna tweet out that he's a good Christian quarterback and Cleveland made a mistake moving on from him. Ball sack sports is gonna probably report something as well. Baker Mayfield quote, and it's like the Aaron Rodgers, I own you. I fucking own you. I own you. I still own you. Or it'll be uh, something like while their quarterback was getting weird with massage therapists, I was actually putting in the fucking work. That'll be the ball sack sports quote. Of course it will be. It's ball sack sports. <laughs> and then Cox Horse will come in and just quote the same thing. Cox Horse? I haven't heard of that that's one. A, that, that is a Twitter account. That's that what is. I haven't heard of. Okay. <laughs> I spend so, way too much time on that stupid-ass app. Fair. So, James, as someone who actually cares about the team right now, how would that make you feel? I care about the team. Um, I, I will also say I'm not necessarily, like, full-on Baker bro, but this was a dude, like, I loved in college. Mm-hmm. Like, watching him we all was did. that guy who gave me that, like, energy. So, when he came to the Browns, obviously, I was ecstatic. So, I'm going to be happy for him to succeed anywhere. It's going to suck. It's going to make me feel bad. Um, but I'll be happy for him. I'll know he's in a better place. Yeah. I mean, I I really do feel for Baker. I know when we've talked, the, the consensus has just kind of been, we feel bad for him, but it's business. You know, I, I understand the move. But I, I really feel for Baker because he's such a lovable dude. Like, even when he got in trouble, it was just goofy. We were like, oh, you you scamp. You you, you goofy little guy. Because he got in trouble. Get, he didn't even get in trouble in college. He ran from the cops. But, like, that right, was just that's what I'm saying. Was, that was That's because he was drunk, and he didn't even get arrested. He just got detained. Right, that's my point. Yeah. Like, even when he got into a minor... I guess the most trouble he's been in, it was something goofy. And we were all like, Oh, that's Baker for you. He So I'll actually, I, so it's funny you say that. I'm pretty sure the story is that it's <clears> two <throat> guys, not even related to Baker got in a bar fight and Baker was drunk and the cops showed up and they questioned him. So he just ran just because <laughs> he had nothing to do with involved in the situation of why the cops were there at all. And people like spun it, but I stopped feeling bad for athletes when I realized that Baker Mayfield is getting paid like 15 million dollars yeah, and if he that's stinks fair. that's fully guaranteed money you can retire with 15 million dollars i stopped feeling bad for you my friend fair enough i mean now, yeah okay. if, if you want to take the true realist cold-hearted capitalist approach to the situation Absolutely. yeah baker's a millionaire but Absolutely. like he's still a guy with feelings and the entire city uh, of cleveland was behind him and now they're like fuck you we got a new quarterback and that quarterback just so happens to be human garbage uh, maybe maybe he should start doing more progressive commercials did you see where they wouldn't do the final progressive commercial no i didn't he wanted to do like one more at home with baker mayfield that was like moving out and progressive wouldn't do it Well, geez, now he's just going to have to go find a different insurance company to model for. Yeah. yeah. That is, that's a wasted opportunity, though. That would have been a great commercial. It's like, it's like Baker with, uh, I, I forget what the name of it is, but like the stick with the bag at the end of it that uh, hobos carry around in like cartoons. You got one of those. What is it? There's a name for it. There's definitely a name for it. Because I heard someone call it. This is really obscure, or really off topic. But I saw an Impractical Jokers skit, and they referred to it as something, but I can't remember what the name of it was. But just like him carrying one of those, and it's like wrapped up in a Panthers flag or something. Turns around, looks at the stadium and sighs, and then a walks bindle? off. A bindle. Bindle. That's what it's called. It's called a, a ba- bindle. According to Google, a bag, a bag sack or carrying device, stereotypically used by the American subculture of hobos. Yeah, it's a bindle. American subculture. <laughs> didn't, didn't know America had a subculture, but okay. I didn't know we had a subculture of hobos, which that's not the politically correct term, homeless individuals. I can't get canceled on my own podcast over Consult. homeless people. Canceled. Yeah, all your homeless podcasts. Oh, yeah, all my homeless you viewers. Look at the Spotify wheel of like where people are listening or whatever. It's like Men, listening. women, other homeless. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the geographical pie is cut out and you're just like the... <laughs> It's like the 0.05% that's this big, and it's just homeless, homeless. individuals. <laughs> you have the quotations, homeless. hobos. Yeah. 
Oh, but, good uh, times. Good times. Classic. Now, is there anything we didn't touch on that you guys want to bring up? I'm sure phones is just going to say I'm done suffering or something like that, but you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm go glad pack, I got a depressed Browns fan on here. Go pack. Go baby. Go pack. Now, go. See, we can't be saying that on my podcast. We can't be saying that filth. You already like been garbage. Off once. You're really yeah. It's about oh. to be second strike. I'm going to have to put you on legitimate timeout. Oh, God. Not timeout. That's it. That's all I got. I yeah. got uh, uh, the, the best night to watch football is Thursday nights. People hate Thursday night football. I love Thursday night football. That's a hot take. Your JOK take has Thursday nothing night. on that. The people hate Thursday night football. I love Thursday night football. I, I like Thursday. I like football, period. But to say it's the best night to watch it? It easily is the best night. Easily. The best the best time of year is when you can get some Wednesday action. You can get Thursday night football, and you can get a Friday game before the Saturday NFL game, and then or Saturday college football, and then Sunday NFL. Okay, okay. If we could, could we rank the days in which it is the best day to watch football, and we are not excluding college? So okay, the- well, I'm going to put college at the bottom because I'm not a big college fan. Really, I'm very sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I go back and I'll watch games for prospects and I'll like follow specific prospects throughout the year, but I'm not like die hard watching every game every Saturday or anything like that. Yeah. Like there, there's nothing wrong with that. I understand it completely. It's football, but it's just not for me. It's more fun personally. Yeah. I do most of my college watching in the off season. Although I won't lie. I watched every single Northern Illinois Husky game last year for their fullback Clint Ratkovich. And how did that make you feel? It made me feel wonderful because Clint Ratkovich came on the seventh episode of our podcast for an interview. Yeah. Shit. He's awesome. I feel really bad though, because uh, he would, we had two fullbacks drafted this year and he was by far the best fullback in the draft, but he tore his ACL working out for the Packers. So he's, pack. yeah. He's made a quick recovery, though. Apparently, he's already back out there training again. But I don't know how likely a fullback coming off a torn ACL is to get a job, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, My expertise is usually baseball, not estimated medical return times. For fullbacks specifically. Except for fullbacks specifically, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, I'm going to, like, scour scouting reports and i'm going to tweet at you and i'm going to find my favorite fullback prospect good all right i will make sure to watch i you would not be the first person to do that i've already had like four different people either dm me or tweet at me with fullback names to watch throughout the season like seriously yeah and i also uh anytime fullbacks get brought up on tiktok i get like four or five people that tag me in videos like one guy he was shitting on the nfl top 100 for including kyle use check nope. and it was just like four or five people tagging me in it being like this guy doesn't pass the vibe check this guy doesn't know ball doesn't doesn't pass the vibe check you can't shit on kyle use check man that's that's you like can't. shit that's like shitting on terrell owens or a jamar chase or i don't know any lovable Baffert. figure yeah exactly yeah it's like shitting on a no. I'm not going to say that because there are people that legitimately it's like shit shitting on, on Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, no, uh, no. <laughs> oh wait. I see. What you're I mean, about. um, uh, it's like uh, uh yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, uh, we just kind of ignored the fact that phones wanted to rank the days. So I got off topic. I mean, do we really want to do that before we go? Saturday, oh, Sunday, yeah. Thursday, Monday. I got Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Saturday. Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, Monday. I love Monday Night Football. See, I like Monday Night Football, but you still have the rest of your week to get through. A Thursday yeah. night, Thursday Night Football yeah. gives you something to talk about Friday morning when you're at the water cooler. Well, see, I've never had a water cooler experience. I'm not part of the workforce, unfortunately. Oh, wow. Dude, I just got my first like adult job. It's not like a bartender, <laughs> and there's a water cooler, but no one's ever around it. And I'm like, guys, come on. 
Come on. Come on. I want to do the gotta, office we, thing. We got to bring back, we got to bring back old, like early 2000s trends. Like I'm going to, I'm going to purposely get a kick. Uh, what is it? Like a, a slide kick. Like the, the, the oh, slide yeah, kick, kick phones. Kick, yeah. Start wearing wheelies. Exactly. Heelys, you mean? Heelys, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to start wearing God. Heelys. Graphic t shirts from Spencer's and uh, Hot Topic again. I'm going to wear. I'm gonna wear like dying, dude. I need I'm going to wear a long. I'm going to wear a long sleeve shirt with a short sleeve shirt over the top of it. I'm going to wear like super boot cut jeans with like just the most massive pockets. On Eyebrow the piercing, like right Eyebrow here. Eyebrow piercing, affliction t shirts, uh, fitted DC hats. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna go to the chin strap. I'm gonna go super, oh, super no. small chin strap. No. Yeah, we're gonna bring back the early the pencil 2000s. strap. Yeah, the, the pencil band. strap. The pencil you strap. My high school class in Massachusetts. That's crazy. Oh my god, no way. That's crazy. Just what? a quick question. I don't know if we went over this the last time we recorded, or if you've picked up on it since. How old do you guys think I am? Twenty-two. We went over it. Twenty-two. No, I'm nineteen. Baby. Yeah. James, how old are you? I'm 27. 27? Wow. Yeah. How old you you know, look at like 24, 25. Nice. 25. Yeah. I was going to guess 25. Yeah. Now nah, I'm a full ass adult, baby. Damn. Water cooler conversations, you know. <laughs> yeah, I love how the – how old did you say you were phones? 23? I'm 30. Thank you. What? <laughs> I, I am 30. You're shitting me. I am 30. Damn. I thought you said you were 23. Yeah, you no. said earlier you were 23. No, I used to wear 23 in school. I am 30. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I thought this whole time you were 23. I'm like, wow, these are really like. I am. I, am I did 30. too. All right. So I'm not the oldest one here. Never mind. No, you are a baby compared to me. <laughs> We only have three quarters of an Olympics between us. It's fine. Three quarters. That's seventy five percent. That's a lot. <laughs> Depends on how you look at it. No, I'm twenty three. I'm literally messing with you guys. Yes, I'm yeah, but I'm old. yeah. See, you guys see? both took like a super long pause, and I'm like, well, they're either gonna laugh at it and be like bullshit, or they're actually gonna believe it. I mean, listen, I, I'm a prime example. Looks can be deceiving. I don't. I'm not gonna double guess any or double check anybody if they tell me their age and I don't believe it right away. Like it's, I do remember seeing you and thinking like, dude, this guy's like, gotta be like 23, 24, whatever, like yeah. 19. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I know it's the beard. It's, oh. it's totally the beard. I wish I had better lighting, but like, if I can drag my, like I have like a full ass, like mane as well. Did not expect that. You're the first person that's come on here that had longer hair than me. That's not true. We did have, you're the third person to come on here. That's had longer hair than me. And the other two were women. Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, uh, I think we're done here. I think we're wrapped up. We didn't take the two hours, thankfully. Uh, we only took an hour and 37 minutes. Who was it beforehand that told me they didn't want to take two hours? Is it phones? Yeah. Yeah. And then, then I realized I have nothing better to do with my day. Hey, it's understandable. Nobody wants to sit on a fucking podcast and talk about a depressing sports team for two hours. I get it. I mean. And if we're being real, if we trim it, we probably spent like 40 minutes on the Browns, <laughs> if that. So... We don't need to worry about it, that. That's that's the vibe of these podcasts. They're they're team previews, but it's it's just kind of talking football for an extended period of time. That's all that matters. We had fun. Yeah. We had a lot more fun getting off topic than we did. Exactly. On that's topic, that's the beauty which of is it. The fun of it. Yeah. Exactly. Someone else finally appreciates it. Thank you. Absolutely. I listen. Mm -hmm. I thrive on chaos, and there's nothing more I love than using my useless football knowledge to be applied in these situations. See, I've trained I try that. for this. I try that, but I bring it up against around people who don't like football like I do, so I just well, don't make any sense. Well, they're stupid. Yeah, but, you know, that's that's part of uh, sucking socially, I suppose. It's just I, I mention football, and then they're like, okay. And that's the end of it. Big ass babies. Yeah, for real. Tell, tell them phones sent you. <laughs> Y'all know phones? Y'all know why his name is phones? <laughs> Oh, That's boy. how I'm going to start introducing myself to people. I'm going to ask them if they know phones. Like, huh? I'll be like, oh, you're not cool enough. Never mind. 
you, you got to be in the know to know, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a early two thousands line right there. Isn't it? Or yeah, is that a little bit older? The, you got to be in the know. You got to be in the know to know. T- yeah. TTYL is it was a big one back then. Mm-hmm. Oh God. I didn't, I never felt old until like I was leaving my old job at a brewery and the kid asked me if I was alive for MTV music videos. <laughs> Oh my god! It's like I don't want to be alive anymore. Shout out to that kid though, because most people don't realize that MTV was a music video place. It was yeah, just yeah. At least had that. Now it's all now it's all ridiculousness and sixteen and pregnant. Is that what it is now? That's it actually much. legit. Anytime I turn it on, it's either of those two. Things. See, my family doesn't have cable. We completely switched to streaming, and I don't know what's on any channels anymore. You're not missing. Listen, I watch like three television shows. It's Yellowstone. <laughs> How I Met Your Mother and Shark Tank. Valid. Watch a lot of cartoons. I do too. I'm mainly the a Sweet Life on guy. Deck is the Sweet Life on Deck is elite. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. I see. I'm the perfect bridge between both of you because I'm three years younger than you, and I'm three years younger than you. Yeah, like I've been uh, rewatching regular sh- or not regular show Adventure Time. I finished regular oh, show for the second time. Regular show is legit. It's my favorite. I can't watch the final episode without bawling my eyes out. Oh, I don't. Don't I have not watched the final episode. You have, do you know what happens? Uh, y- yes, but I don't want. I, okay. I refuse to watch it. I That's valid. It. Then I was. I thought you were just completely ignorant. No, if you know what happens, I understand not wanting to watch it. No, I have never it's watched rough. the off. I have never watched the Office. It's trash. I like the Office, but I understand the the hate towards it. It's a bit overrated. overrated. It is. Hell. People started making that their personality. It's like, yeah, I watch the Office. Like, oh, get over it. Yeah, I like uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine's my favorite. Never like, on that New Girl. New never Girl's got fantastic. into New Girl. New Girl's new great. Girl, I never got into New Girl. Nick Miller's one of the best written characters in TV. Oh my god, yeah, I relate to Nick. I'm, I call myself all the time Nick Miller if he was twelve years younger. <laughs> I guess I have to watch. I guess I have to watch New Girl now. Oh my god, what is it? Dinosaurs. <laughs> Don't believe it. I'm seeing the evidence. <laughs> my favorite quote from him is, uh, I, "I forget what they were doing. They were like admitting stuff. He was like, I don't think I ever learned how to read. I just memorized a lot of words." <laughs> 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 Nick Miller was my yearbook quote, my senior quote. It was like, uh, "I know this is going to end horribly, but the middle part's going to be awesome," or something like that. Mm-hmm. That was my, my senior favorite. quote. One of my favorite TV show quotes is from that too. When he's like, do you want me to build a dresser and please a woman? I'm not God. <laughs> okay. Now I really have, now I really have it's to incredible. watch incredible. It's, it's awesome. So good, dude. It really is. And Nick Miller's like a diehard bears fan on oh, top of everything. Why. Miller, yeah. Miller, fucking bears. Yeah. And also just the repressed anger and, <laughs> you know, the inability to act like a normal human being 95% of the time. I'm a little more calm, though. I'll say that. I, I haven't quite hit my old man anger yet. Oh. I'm still a little bit off from that. I can't wait. I, can't wait. <laughs> I feel like I'm like once I hit 30, I'm going to get there. I'm very excited. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, 30, yeah. 30 is going to be my dilf years. I'm going to be hitting. You're going to be hitting dilfs? No, I'm okay, gonna... hey, whatever you're into, we do not judge here. Carl Nassib just got an ex- or got a contract. We're all for it. I almost oh. met Carl Nassib in a club and I was pissed. That you almost met him or that you didn't meet him? That I didn't meet him. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, hold on. I was going to say, way, like, you put it the other way. No, well, yeah, but I was thinking, like, maybe you were at the wrong type of club. No, uh, this was before this first stint on the, mm. uh, on the Bucks when I lived in Tampa. My fiance, my now fiance, was hanging out with her friend, and like they had a mutual friend that had Carl Nassib show up. And so I was working at this restaurant. I'm like, oh my god, like have him come out, have him come out tonight. And he fucking bailed. Well, you know, Carl, he just he just had better things to do. Couldn't add him to the list. Unfortunate. Do you have a list of players you've met? Mm -hmm. James, fact, I used to work my first like kitchen job. Is that well? I worked my internship at Gillette stadium for special events and players dining. So I met like, I met Logan Ryan. I met Jimmy Garoppolo, which is a really dumb story, but <laughs> he was nice. Tom Brady said, good morning to me. I met Nate Ebner. Julian, Julian Edelman made fun of me for not being able to cook eggs. I met nice. like, I met some dope people, Vince Wilfork and his wife. 
who is white this, is the sweetest human being. I was gonna say they're supposed to be the sweetest people. They're so fucking nice. It was unbelievable. That's awesome. It was a yeah. cool experience. Made me hate the Patriots. I've only ever met one NFL player. I met Jack Lambert when I was like seven. And I have a, it, it's a really funny story though, because he uh I, I'm from Maryland mm -hmm. and uh he was at my local mall doing like a signing and you had to buy tickets ahead of time. But my uncle's a diehard Steelers fan. So he went and we just happened to be at the mall at the same time. So he was like, Hey, come up with me. So I go up on the, like the platform he's on, he's signing something. I had a Brian Urlacher jersey on. He looks at me and he goes, is that an Urlacher jersey? And I said, yeah. And he goes, you know, I bet I could kick his ass. And I, and I laughed at him. I laughed in Jack Lambert's face as a seven-year-old because I didn't nice. realize who he was. And he started laughing too. And he goes, you know what? You probably shouldn't tell him that. Cause I, I think you could probably get me at this point. And I said, uh-huh. And that was my entire interaction with Jack Lambert. Jack Lambert. <laughs> Let's see. Who Sorry. else have I met? I mean, outside of football, I've met Ray Allen. That's cool. Um, um, I don't think I've ever met any famous baseball players. Uh, I met Johnny Pesky once, but he was super old. That's like just a straight up Boston bias. I don't think I, I don't think I have. I don't think I have. But all right, boys, I'm getting out of here. I'm exhausted. I was just ready to say we got to finish up. If you guys yeah. want to plug anything, you're more than welcome to. Real quick, uh, you can find me on Twitter at at Jamie Renner seventeen. That's uh, that's where you could find this depressing fan. I'll do play by plays every week of. And, and Twitter spaces of my misery as a Browns fan. Uh, that's pretty much it. Right. Okay. You can also find me at Jamie Renner 17 on Twitter. <laughs> uh, no, you can find me everywhere at Boda Sports, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Not really YouTube. Not going to pretend like I do that enough. Uh, but yeah, I'm out there. Just look up, look up Boda Sports. I'm probably there. Yeah. Hashtag stonks to the moon. Yep. And shout out uh, Boda Sports for making a TikTok about Frostburg State University. Absolute real ones over here. <laughs> Next time someone asks you about a football player from Frostburg State University, just put me. I don't play football, but just <laughs> just put me anyways. <laughs> just put like a little like bad edit of your like face going. <laughs> here, I'll do it right now so you can have it. Just yeah. oh, shit, I got to remake the Frostburg video. <laughs> Pull that from the from the from the podcast. I'll send you the recording before I post it, and you can just pull that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys so much for coming on. I really do appreciate it, especially after having to do it twice before. Um, My pleasure. Yeah, I, I think I said this already, but I'm glad it was you two that it fucked up with, just because I feel like anyone else would have told me to go fuck myself. You know, but you guys are chill as shit, so I didn't worry about that one bit. I have moments. I have, my, I have my moments. I'm not always depressed. Fair. <laughs> so I sometimes see, I sometimes touch grass outside. Yeah. But uh, I'll make sure to put your links in the description as well. I got to point that out. I got to make that known because if I don't, people will not pay any attention because Lord knows nobody's going to actually type out your Twitter handle because people are fucking lazy. But uh, to you guys, and of course, to, oh, also, real quick, uh, if you disagree with anything we said in the podcast, which we said a lot, uh, make sure to let us know in the comments. Call us out by name, and we will come fight you to boost the algorithm. Uh, leave as many comments as we possibly can responding to you. We'll respond in one word, paragraphs. Um, <laughs> and also, also, if you agree with what we said, make sure to let us know, and make sure to drop a like as well, because uh, phones, you, you tell them why to drop a like. You did a really good job the last time. The reason why you should drop a like on this podcast, well, for starters, only winners listen to this podcast. Winners win, losers lose. Uh, don't be a Roger Goodell. Be a Dave Portnoy and just win. Uh, you know, If you do like it, I, I'm just going to send the good energy. I hope you find $20 on your way. Yeah, uh, you know, to go out to eat or something in the in the, the jeans that you usually never check. Hope you pick up the winning lottery ticket. And uh, you know, like I said, winners win, losers lose. Pick a side, pick one. I don't give a shit. I'm a depressed Browns fan for all I care. Um, yeah. Make there sure you, you make sure you like, subscribe. If you don't, that means. Um, your girlfriend's probably going to break up with you and your most hated team is going to win the Super Bowl guaranteed this year. Couldn't have said it better myself. But to you, I always point the wrong fucking direction. 
to you guys and to everyone out there watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, night, evening, afternoon, whatever time of day it is for you. I hope you enjoy it because you're all wonderful people.